Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. So just the thumbnail, the title suggests uh, we are way, 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 way ahead of schedule. And I want to take a look at uh, some different parameters about what it was from the previous all time high to having and also from the previous all time high to two months before the having, which is essentially where we're at. So let's just jump right in. First of all, I've been talking about this for, for quite a bit because this cycle feels a little a little bit different. And when I say that, I mean just to how far ahead we are and just uh, how we actually flushed out the cancerous cells that were the BlockFi, the Celsius, and the FTXs. And I think we're uh, in, in the right, uh, right position here, right place, right time, like I say. And we talked about this just about a week ago. I said, hey, Bitcoin breaks 50K. We're way ahead of schedule. Let's take a look at alts. And I was uh, referencing what uh, Dan Gambardello says. And uh, just taking a look at the charts because people love to take a look at those. And I can tell you that from back then, it looked pretty good. And then two weeks ago, I said the same thing. I was like, look, we're way ahead of schedule. There's something going on. I think this might be a good time to actually lump some in. That was when we were pre-50K. I want to say 45. This is two weeks ago. Now, of course, when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about what I should do, not what you should do. You, of course, are smarter than me. You know your finances better. I can't give a financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor or your dad. So of course you do whatever you want to do. Having said that, something's going on because when I, when I take a look at things, it's just, I think just, we're just way ahead. So of course I'm a big believer in the four year cycles. I know some people say it has nothing to do with what Bitcoin does and it doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, I'm, don't buy it because it's all about a narrative and, and the narratives push it. And if people will, will tell you like, oh, well, you know, real world utility pushes the crypto market. No, it doesn't. It's hype and speculation. That's really what it comes down to. And as we get into the, the having, you're going to hear about this on MSNBC. You're going to hear about this on CNBC. You're going to hear this on Yahoo News. You're going to hear it on every publication you can possibly get your hands on. And they're going to talk about the having, the having, the having. And it's the same thing. It happens over and over again. This will be our fourth having going into it. So Again, as a little refresher, I did an updated chart this morning, and you can see that in 2012, we had a halving. Then immediately after halving, we get an all-time high. Next year after that is a dip and a reset. Then we go to 2016, halving. 2017, all-time high, dip and a reset. 2020, halving, all-time high, dip, reset. 2024, halving. And you can just see, as the chartologists like to say, we're setting, putting in higher highs or whatever they say. And I just look at this and I go, price goes up, looks good, I'm happy. So when I take a look at this, what I wanted to do, because we've taken a look at you know, how far ahead how we are, what I want to take a look at specifically was I want to say, okay, what was the previous all-time high to the halving? And I want to take a look back at the other couple of different halvings. And, uh, or excuse me, from the all time highs to the next having. Now, I can't do 2012 because, you know, that was, that was the first, that was the Genesis uh, four years there. I, I know that doesn't exist, but I just said it. What I'm taking a look here is the, ha the all time high from 2013 to the having of the next cycle. Because remember, 2013, high. So having 2012, all time high, dip, reset, another having in 2016. Between those two spaces, and you can see it's, uh, it's quite brutal if you wanted to hold on, but she would have been rewarded handsomely going up into 2017, but you were 42% down. On 2013, November 29th was the all-time high. That was $1,132 for Bitcoin. To the next halving, and of course, yes, there was a quite a low from 2013 to 2015. The low, it went from $1,100, whatever it was, to 172. That's an 85% drop. Yes, we know that, we got it. What I'm taking a look at is all-time high to the next having. What was the price action? 42% drop. Not too bad, but I mean, not as bad as like 85% drop. So it did recover, but just remember this number, 42%. All right, let's fast forward. Now we go into 2017. The all-time high was almost 20 grand. And to the next having in 2020, remember those times? Great times. Oh, it was fun times. Everybody's having a great ball. We were uh, just getting out of uh, the, the Cerveza sickness. The quantitative easing was uh, going off without a hitch. Jerome Powell and the Fed Reserve were printing money like crazy, and everybody was getting rich. Good times had by all. However, between that point and 2020, it was a 56% drop. That's a lot. 
And then also as a reminder, we drop 84%. So things start to, you know, you start to see like a, a trend here, 85%, 84%. It was 42. Now this one was 56, a little bit more accelerated, a little bit harsher of a drop from the high to the low or not the low, low, but the time at the halving, 56%. Interesting, right? Now check this out. Why I say we're way ahead, because Bitcoin's never done this. Bitcoin's never been this low between the point of the all-time high, which was 67,700 of the last cycle in 2021, to the time frame today, which is 52,000. But Rob, how can you say that? <laughs> because we aren't even at a halving. Maybe that's just skewed numbers. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. It gets more entertaining. So you'll think to yourself, 20%, ah, that's too bad. And check this out. If you take two months prior to the halving, because we're roughly about two months away, right? Roughly March, April, April 19th, April 20th, somewhere around there, right? If you take it from 2013 to two months prior to the halving, you're actually 60% down. 60% because it was 1,132 to $460. It didn't get a six, it didn't rally to 650 bucks. And tell people like, having hey, that sounds good. I should get in that. And then this was this is what gets crazier. Look at this. 60% again. Two months prior to the halving, from 2017, almost 20 grand, to March 11th of 2020, which was 7,932. Now, I could have went, I could have skewed the results and used March 15th because Bitcoin went down to below $5,000. Or no, maybe it was around five thousand. But I was like, nah, that's that's not. I shouldn't do that because that's that's uh, really messing with, with the numbers. Because then it'll be like 67, 70 percent, something like that. I didn't want to freak anybody out or get too super bullish. So let's just say 60, 60, 60. And what are we at? We're two months prior to the having, and we're at twenty three percent. What do you think's going to happen? As we get into the halving and everybody's talking about it, we've got Fidelity and BlackRock and all the different people vying for these ETFs. And oh yeah, one more thing about that. This was from, this is a pretty funny account, Bitcoin Munger. Uh, OTC desks are getting drained of their coins. Now, honestly, I thought the ETF would be big. I didn't know it was gonna be this big. And we see that there's demand between 6X and, and 14X of the 900 Bitcoin that are being produced and mined every single day, we've got thousands of Bitcoin being asked for and used and snatched up by these ETFs. And it looks like it's not slowing down. The voracious demand from ETFs is going to lead to an explosion in price. Pretty soon there's a blah, blah, blah. But you're going to see here, the OTC desks, which is where essentially a lot of these ETFs are, are you know, bringing in their, uh, their Bitcoin potentially. Uh, you can see that it's been a nice, slow, steady drop since December as it goes down. Now, will this uh, completely dry up? It's anybody's guess, but uh, it looks like there's a lot going on and a lot of people actually buying. I don't want to make anybody too bullish. So let's just rein it in and say, hey, these are good times. I think you're in the right place at the right time. Could we have World War III tomorrow? Sure. Could we have a this this recession, a hard landing come in? In the next, uh, you know, in Q2, sure, we definitely could. But this is just the data that we have today. I'm sure there will be something negative and or positive tomorrow, but take the win for what it is. So let me just think about that in the comment section. And there is one more thing just about how this goes is, you know, we, we, we took a look at all this stuff, but it's just amazing. Just one more data point, which is this. We took a look at the cycle one, as I call it, the all-time high to the to the low. In 2013 and 2015, it was 85%. From 2017 to 2018, it was 84%. It went from $19,700 to $3,000, 84% drop. I personally thought that we would see around 85% drop. And if we did, that would have been a Bitcoin price of around $10,000. Did not see that. We only dropped to 77%. So if we're looking at how far we are ahead and how brutal it's been, quite honestly, it hasn't dropped like it used to. 77% to 85%, still a long way to go. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I'm feeling pretty good. Let me 
get off of all this bullishness that doesn't feel right not on this channel <laughs> but there's a bullish story citibank uh i'm not a big fan of citibank or mostly any banks except usaa i've had that since i was in the military i love that place but the city banks and the jp morgans of the world i could do without anyhow but one thing they can't do without is us. City collaborates with Wellington Management and Wisdom Tree to explore tokenization of private markets. Now, Larry Fink from BlackRock, is, uh, who is the uh, CEO, head of uh, BlackRock and their nine or 10 trillion assets under management, has said the next evolution for finance is, of course, RWAs or real world assets, tokenization of those assets and moving things along. Citibank heard him and said, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to use Avalanche. <laughs> this is what we got. So the proof of concept which was conducted on the Avalanche Spruce Institutional Test Subnet on Avalanche, found that smart contract capabilities could deliver new functionality and operational efficiencies. And I was like, well, that's great, but uh, why? So apparently private markets, a 10 trillion asset class, let me say that again, private markets, 10 trillion asset class, are characterized by an infrastructure that is complex and manual with a lack of standardization and transparency leading to inefficient distribution and operations. You know, the banks have had decades to fix this. I don't know what they're doing, but apparently they want distributed ledger technology, apparently with Avalanche, to bring them into the 21st century. And oh yeah, this is the second one. This was on Valentine's Day, February 14th. And as a reminder, Avalanche actually did the same thing with JP Morgan. Not a fan of them and Jamie Dimon, but it doesn't matter. They don't have to be a fan of us for them to use what they know is going to be good. And this was actually uh, last year, November 15th, JP Morgan's Onyx, which is a centralized, private, permissioned DLT. But they still have to use Avalanche for tokenized funds. And Avalanche jumped 14% at that point, which is why I believe in Avalanche and uh, the team behind it. We just had uh, uh, the head of gaming uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it just makes sense. I mean, if if, Av if Avalanche wins, great. I got a little bit of that. If Ethereum is the next big layer one, sure. Or Solana or Cardano or Sui. I don't really care. I got all that stuff. Uh, or maybe it's just Bitcoin. Who knows? But uh, whichever wins, I'll be pretty happy as long as it's in my bags. <laughs> and that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive and it's only going to accelerate as we get into uh, the halving, which is, should be around April 19th or 20th. Correct me in the comment section. But that's it for today.